in the previous video we got to this point we have a circuit board that has been etched and tin plated and in this video I'm going to cover the rest. I'm going to apply a solder mask I'm going to expose it and develop it then I will apply solder paste and place the surface mount components I'll then bake the board in a toaster oven as a uh, cheap reflow oven and finally I will hand solder a few components. The first step for the solder mask is to cut it to shape. So if you go to eBay and type in dry film solder mask you can buy a uh, small roll for about twenty or thirty dollars. We need to cut it so that it covers all of the copper but does not overhang the board. If you have the solder mask film overhanging the board when you run it through the laminator, it will stick to the rollers, and that's of course uh, a bad thing. So, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and cut this to shape. Alright, so there we got it. Um, it's covering all the copper, but not overhanging the board. We need to um, peel off one of the protective films on this solder mask. One side is glossy, the other side is matte. We need to peel off this matte film. An easy way to do that is with a couple pieces of tape. And actually, uh, before I do that, I'm going to turn on my laminator and let it warm up. Okay. So a couple pieces of tape. If you uh, pick a corner of the solder mask, stick it onto one side, stick the other one on the other side. You have to pull these apart quick. If you pull slowly, the tape will just peel off. So you have to kind of jerk it apart like that. Try not to touch the solder mask. What you want to do is place it on one edge, the, I guess the, the leading edge of your board, and uh, gently press it down on that leading edge. And peel off the tape. and just gently uh, press down that leading edge. Leave the rest of it just kind of uh, sitting on the board. It, uh, it won't fall off, but it isn't stuck down either. I'm gonna wait for this laminator to heat up and then I'll run it through uh, a few times. All right, my laminator is now up to temperature and I'll go ahead and run it through. So I pressed down on this edge, which will be my leading edge. All right, so it's been through one pass. It's uh, stuck down reasonably well. There's no uh, big air pockets or voids or anything like that. If we look on the back, we can see, well, it may not be obvious to you, but there's a few spots where uh, you can see the yellow of the board. And that would indicate that it hasn't been pushed all the way down to the bottom. Um, I'm using 10 mil spacing, which is really kind of pushing the limits of, uh, well, pushing beyond the limits of a dry film solder mask that you can do at home. So I'm not going to be able to get all of those perfectly fixed, but I'll run it through the laminator a few times and I'll have a little bit better coverage. Um, I would recommend if you are doing a circuit that doesn't need such tight uh, spacing to do maybe uh, 15 or 20 mil spacing but that's what I'm doing. So there's now quite a bit less of the yellow showing. We'll run it through again. Alright, so that's about as good as it's going to get. Let's uh, turn the laminator off. 
So the board is now quite warm. Um, it's uh, If it was any hotter, it'd be really uncomfortable to hold. So it, that's kind of roughly how hot it is. You can see there's um, very little yellow between the uh, traces. So the majority of the mask has been pushed down into the grooves and onto the um, uh, fiberglass board. So I'm going to let this cool back down to room temperature and then we can expose it. It's been just over a minute and the board has uh, cooled back down to room temperature. Uh, now I need to take my solder mask layer and uh, print it out to a transparency. I'm going to, going to I'm going to place it on the board, carefully align it. Uh, you want to be careful that you check alignment everywhere, especially on the corners, because if you have it a little bit off, it may look great here and then be off here. So just be very careful. Take your time. And uh, yeah, so you place the transparency down, get it aligned, and then carefully place your um, UV transparent sheet of uh, plastic on top. All right, so I've got it aligned properly, and I've got the plastic sheet on top. You want to now double check that at every uh, corner of the plastic sheet that it is actually sitting flat. It's not, for example, like I'm using a cardboard work surface. Make sure your cardboard isn't wavy and uh, keeping the plastic sheet from sitting flat. And that looks fine. So we now know that the transparency is properly aligned. We have the plastic sheet to uh, keep pressure on it and we know that the plastic sheet is sitting flat on the board. We can now expose it. With my particular lamp, I find that um, I need to expose for at least 10 minutes and 11 to 12 seems to work a little bit better. So I'm going to expose for 12 minutes. Alright, so 12 minutes have gone by and we're done exposing the board. The data sheet for the dry film solder mask uh, recommends that you let it sit for half an hour um, as part of the curing process. So I'm going to go ahead and put this board in a drawer for half an hour and when we get back we'll go ahead and uh, peel off the protective film and develop it. It's almost been half an hour and I might as well mix up the developer for the solder mask. Uh, I use a ratio of half a gram of sodium carbonate to 12 ounces of water. And now that I say that, it's kind of weird that I mix metric and imperial, but <laughs> anyway, that's the ratio that I use. And so you can use pH increaser at like a pool supply store. I think I even got this at um, Okay, so it's, it's been half an hour. <laughs> uh, I got this, I think, at Walmart or Target or something like that. But it's uh, dirt cheap, um, maybe 5 or $10, and you have a lifetime supply. All right, so I'm going to measure out half a gram. All right, so it's uh, not very much at all. You can see there's barely any in there. And I'll go ahead and add um, 12 ounces of water. developer is mixed up and we can now take the board and peel off the glossy protective film. Uh, I find that using a razor blade or a box cutter or X-Acto knife works pretty well. You just kind of work it into one of the edges and kind of pry it up carefully. And then just peel it off. Alright, double check that all of the uh, powdered uh, 
sodium carbonate has dissolved, and it has. And go ahead and stick the board in the developer. In my experience, it'll take about uh, five minutes, maybe a little bit longer to develop. So you just gently brush the surface, um, and eventually you'll see the pads uh, visible without the uh, solder mask on top. Alright, so I just washed it off and realized this really weird defect. So you can see that the solder mask stuck to the copper, well, tin-plated copper, but did not stick to the fiberglass board. That's really weird. I haven't had that happen before. Um, I'm not entirely sure of the cause. Uh, it could be one of, or I'm thinking it could be one of two things. Um, my solder mask film is about a year old, and I don't know how old it was before I got it. So it may be an issue related to shelf life. Um, it's also possible that maybe my um, UV lamp is uh, getting a little bit weaker over time and it wasn't exposed long enough because um, I've done exposures at 10 minutes which was uh, shorter than this exposure and had no problems before. Anyway, I'm not entirely sure what the cause was um, but the board is still usable so I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the uh, project. As you can see, there is a pretty good solder mask coverage on pretty much every trace, just nothing uh, on the uh, fiberglass itself. And there's a few spots where it, there's a, a little bit missing, like right there. But overall, I think it'll still work just fine, and it is a very simple board, or relatively simple board. So the next step in this procedure is to expose the board again to UV light for about half an hour. So let's go ahead and do that. Half an hour has gone by and uh, we're finished uh, with the final UV exposure of the board. And the uh, final step in the solder mask process is to bake it. The data sheet recommends 145 degrees Celsius for half an hour. So that's what I'll do. That's pretty much the end of the solder mask process. I'm going to let this cool back down to ambient temperature and then I will uh, cut the board to shape and sand it to shape and then we can go on with the rest of populating and soldering. Cut the board cooled down to room temperature and I'm going to take my tin snips and uh, trim the board reasonably close to the perimeter and then I will do the final um, shaping with a uh, little belt sander. I forgot to show on camera, but I also drilled out the two holes for my heatsink. And I'm now ready to uh, 
apply solder paste and all the components. So I have my solder paste, tweezers of course, um, I'm using a heat sink that I scavenged off of a motherboard. And then all the components, uh, pretty mostly uh, surface mount. Uh, I have a few uh, through hole transistors that I'm going to make surface mount, but other than that, uh, it's all pretty much all surface mount. All right, so I'm going to start by um, mounting the the trickiest component, which is going to be the uh, microcontroller. Uh, it isn't too bad, but it's the one that'll be the most difficult. After that, I'll then uh, mount the three gate drivers, and then the other items should be trivial. Alright, so I've got solder paste applied for all of the uh, surface mount components. And as you could probably see, it's uh, rather difficult to apply pressure to the, uh, the syringe of solder paste and keep your hand steady. So, if you're going to do this for very many boards, you're probably going to want to buy a solder paste dispenser, which I think I will probably do pretty soon. Anyway, <clears throat> let's place the rest of the components. I have a uh, cheat sheet that I'm looking at that kind of tells me where everything goes. Alright, I've got all the uh, surface mount components placed and uh, I'm just going to take a um, eye loop and double check that all the components are correct and then I will go ahead and uh, put it in my uh, reflow oven, well, toaster oven, as a reflow oven. Alright, so I double checked that all the components on the board are in fact the correct components and placed in the right spots and we are now ready to reflow. Alright, uh, for preheat I'm going to uh, set it to about 150 degrees Celsius, which is about uh, 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to let it warm up for um, half a minute to a minute, and then I'll uh, run the temperature up higher and uh, keep on until the solder melts. All right, I'm now going to adjust the thermostat and let it run uh, hotter until the solder melts. All right, it looks like all the solder has melted, so I'm going to let it cool down. It's far from perfect, but uh, it worked out pretty well. And let's uh, go use some flux and uh, a soldering iron to clean up. Looks like there is a uh, one or two uh, 0805s that need to be cleaned up, and then um, getting rid of some solder bridges. All right, 
So, uh, I'm not sure if it was really obvious on camera, but I have a uh, capacitor here that has tombstone. And then I have some solder bridges on the microcontroller. Other than that, um, everything else looks alright. Uh, it's certainly not, you know, um, professional level, but it's uh, should be certainly good enough for a, a hobbyist prototype. So I'm going to uh, re-solder that capacitor, um, fix the solder bridge, and then I'll go ahead and mount all the other um, through-hole components, although I'm going to mount them on the surface uh, just because I don't feel like drilling. Alright, so I've got all the surface mount stuff cleaned up. That ended up being, um, taking way more time than it should have, um, but oh well. Um, I figures when I have it on camera I always end up, uh, doing stuff like that, but oh well. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and finish up with the, uh, through hole items that I'm going to make surface mount. Alright, so it's almost done. Uh, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, take some isopropyl alcohol and a brush and I'm going to clean off all the flux residue. So I'll be right back. Alright, so I uh, forgot to set up my camera for it, but I cleaned off the circuit board with uh, isopropyl alcohol and a little brush. And uh, so now there's not a whole bunch of flux residue all over the place. All that's left is to uh, mount the heatsink. So as I mentioned earlier, this was off of a uh, computer motherboard, and it is intended to be kind of pushed through uh, holes on a motherboard, but these aren't going to reach um, long enough for this application, so I'm going to cut these off and then use regular screws and nuts to retain it. So this was a uh, fun project. It uh, turned out pretty well. I'm going to uh, now have to go through the process of writing the firmware, which will be the fun part. <laughs> um, but yeah, it turned out all right. Um, so 
if you saw the first part of this uh, two-part video, uh, the first part went much better than this one. Um, the etching and tin plating, of course, went kind of without a hitch. Uh, the second video was uh, kind of a, a string of problems, which is unfortunate. I was tempted to not post this video. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I was tempted to not post this video, um, but I'm going to go ahead and post it anyway, just because, um, especially if you're a hobbyist, it's important to realize that not everything goes as great as a uh, typical YouTube video might indicate. A lot of people don't post things unless um, they turn out perfectly or close to it. So as you saw, um, the solder mask didn't work out as well as I had hoped. Um, I have a feeling it was either due to the uh, the age of the solder mask film, or perhaps I didn't expose it long enough, uh, or both. Um, the uh, solder paste didn't work out nearly as well as it usually did for me, because I had quite a few uh, solder bridges. And I also, um, entirely my fault, I forgot to... Uh, use thermal reliefs on a lot of the pads, so that caused issues in reflow as well. Um, other than that, it, it turned out alright. Um, if you're wondering why I went to the uh, trouble of modifying the TO220 transistors to be surface mount, it's because I have uh, a few of them laying around and I want to use them up before I buy some proper uh, modern surface mount transistors. Um, same with this uh, potentiometer. I just have this one laying around and uh, it'll work out. So I just uh, <laughs> made it work. Um, yeah, other than that, it, it should work out pretty well. And um, hopefully this will be at least a little bit of help to the, uh, the hobbyists out there that uh, all only see videos that are uh, of success. But uh, anyway, so if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Hope this video was helpful or at least entertaining. Um, I'll see you next time.